Hello, hello. You're muted. Good one. Hello. Hey. I didn't want you to hear me shout obscenities at you. <clears throat> Dude, you actually did it within 30 seconds. I'm so proud of you. He, he, I did. He said word. Sorry. What? I think, don't worry about it. Okay. Hey, gamers. Welcome to Dungeon Discourse, the show where we talk about the show. I can't have a tagline that doesn't sound like the fucking... Uh, what's it called that Critical Role does? Talk Smack or the other one? Yeah, Talk Smack Like, literally, I, their tagline is just the best, and whenever I, like, start rambling to start of the show, that's the first thing that comes to mind, and I can't help it. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, hey! It's Hi. Thursday. We're bringing this, bringing this back after a little break because of fucking IRL busyness and all that shit. But we have Koiba and Beanie. To talk about Hello. the last couple of episodes, some, you know, both of their characters went through some shit. Um, since we last saw them on this show, uh, Koi was more recently than 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 Ethan's, but you know, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. All, we'll talk about it all, um, and all that good stuff. But uh, first of all, some announcements. If you missed it or missed the announcement before, this Saturday. Uh, noon EST, 6 p.m. Uh, 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 CET, 5 p.m. UK, 10 p.m. 10 a.m. Pacific, whatever the fuck that may be in Australia. Uh, we're doing the first session of our uh, Nether Deep campaign on Laura's channel. So twitch.tv forward slash LauraK483. To, to watch that live. I'm going to be a player in it. There's going to be some familiar faces. Laura's going to be DMing. We got Natty, who's been on the show before. He's going to be playing, as well as Ismera, who has been on the channel a, a couple of times, as well, in some, in some one shot shenanigans, the, the Witcher one shots, uh, and I think one other. Yeah, I think one they other. did. They did. Yeah, Laura I've done, did. I've done two of them. I mean, I think I've done two of them. So. Yeah, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, and then a, a, a couple of people that I haven't met before, so that's gonna be fun. I love meeting new people. I'm not shy at all. <laughs> um, so if you want to watch that, uh, visit us at Laura's channel this uh, Saturday evening or noon or whatever the fuck it may be in your neck of the woods. Noon Eastern. Oh my goodness! Did did uh, Noon Eastern on twitch.tv slash Laura K forty eight three. You good? Yeah, Kobe just got up to go get his dinner and then got his pocket caught on the door handle. <laughs> that happens to me so many fucking times, man. It's fucking annoying. Or, you, you know what's even see worse? The door flex. You know when you wear, like, jeans or something and, like, the little and thingies the that, you, that your belt goes into, your they, like, get caught yeah. in the fucking handle somehow? Dude, like, what the fuck, man? How the fuck I does that even happen? I broke a belt loop on a pair of suit trousers because I got them caught on a door handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fucking Ignore. trash. Tragic. Um, How's your pocket, my guy? Shut the fuck up! I'm so upset with Steve. I like I just look over and just see that I could my door handle's right there. Fuck you, door handle. Fuck you, door handle. Don't worry, guys. He's got a handle on it now. Do I have any other announcements? I know. I mean, uh, Sunday we're my... here for uh, for Dungeon Select, of course. I was gonna have an announcement. An announcement was gonna be, yo, my dinner is gonna be on the way soon, so I'm gonna have to be but uh, never mind. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Um. We're gonna have a guest on DS soon. We probably won't. It will, whenever the episode happens that they finally get their ass on that fucking pirate ship, <laughs> we'll have a guest. So uh, I, think no I think it's no secrets. I think it's no secret. We know. We all know who it is, right? I oh, genuinely have no idea. Oh, I'm not gonna say it then. Never mind. I genuinely 100. percent I've not even thought about it. <laughs> I have, no, no I have suspicions. But... I mean, yeah, I can have like suspicions. But I'm not gonna guess and shit because what's the fucking point? Okay, but I, I won't have, say anything. Have... Then. But um, yeah. is it Bowdy? Is he playing another changeling? Oh no, my it's, god! It's not. It's not. It's not Bowdy. It's not Bowdy. You didn't say it's not a changeling. <laughs> is it your mum? It is my mum. How did you know? I knew it. I just knew it. Mum's first. Told me last D &D. night. Told me after last after sex. <laughs> fucking sorry. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? I'm done with college shit until September. It's kind of pog. I'm kind of pogging I hate a little you bit. So much. I'll be working uh, two to three days a week, but at least I won't have any college shit to deal with. That's nice. I'm going to be racking in the fat stacks. Save up some money to buy some PC, some much needed PC upgrades because this this old this old 1070. And dated count dated counterparts. Uh, it's not gonna last much longer, man. I'll be honest. 
left it on its last legs. Uh, do you guys have anything you want to pr pr you know, announce, promote, push, whatever the fuck? Mm. No. But that bun looks amazing. It's a good bun, it be. Damn. God damn, like dude. A, a brioche bun? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Looks fire. It's, good. it's like slightly toasted as well. So. Fire. Fire. All right. Abby, it's you. So Why would you fucking spoil it, Abby? God fucking damn it. Of course. I get, try to keep this a fucking secret. And then she comes in and she fucking ruins it, dude. No, it's not Abby. Something, something. It's British actually people. six different gifts. And gifts? we're just all getting replaced. Gifts? Gifts? Yeah. Man, I did an open close shift today after 45 minutes of sleep. Oh, there it because... is, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Check that off your bingo cards, baby! <laughs> All right. Um, the last like <laughs> seven weeks of DS, I've been like well rested and like fucking ready to go. It's okay, man. You get to sleep it's after not. this. This, this, you know, like forty-five more minutes or so, and you'll be in bed, homie. Don't worry about it. Three no, it's not. I'm gonna have to do camera shit later. Well, uh, it sucks to suck, man. I'm sorry. Um. <clears throat> Dutch is toxic. That's all. It's actually Dutch. He's DMing and playing at the same time. Yeah, Valor is just sticking around. Fuck it. No, I don't want him. Fuck that guy. I mean, if you insist. <sighs> Have done. Apparently am. Will do in the future. Brooks is finally going to feel what a real T-Fling feels like. <laughs> um, I mean, okay. apart from all the other T-Flings he slept with. No, but this one's a real one. <laughs> this one's a real one. All right. As opposed to, to Pleasure, who's a fake Quick T-Fling. Quick recap for, before we get going. Last episode, uh, you, know, you saved Valor and did some more exploring throughout the fort to find his uh, belongings, did a cool little puzzle that gave you some statues that you can use to turn them into actual lions once a week. That's kind of sick, you know, a little, little cool gimmick item that you can use once a week. But who knows, might actually, if used at the right time, provide you with just the one-up you need in a certain combat encounter to give you the win. Who knows? You know, Middle pirate ship. <laughs> I don't know about that, <laughs> but okay. when they it's die, like, do they revert back the, the, to statues? The item you can you just throw that a sixty foot like within sixty feet unoccupied space. Water isn't occupied, right? Ship keeps going. Lion is just. <laughs> if they die, does it leave a corpse, or do they just like? No, they will turn back into the statue, and they will just be wherever the fuck they were. So oh, we can eat them as long as we keep them alive. I don't know. Oh, no, oh man, no. they do turn to a lion. Um, <clears throat> anyway, after that, you did some traveling uh, and made it to a small town, small village, I should say, of which I forgot the name, so I'm gonna have to get my cheat sheet out North, real South quick. North, man. Uh, Northberry, which is a small farming town, or uh, village, I, it's, a, it's actually a town, but it's actually, it's a fucking, it's barely a village, it's that small. Um, just stay the night at one of Valor's safe houses, um, got some supplies, and are ready to continue the trek down to Strathmore, I think, right? Yes, yeah, Strathmore, mm -hmm. uh, which should on paper be another four days of travel. But then again, if, if, if Jax pulls off some fucking, uh, actually three days, but if Jax pulls off some map shits, then you'll be there in a day and a half and you'll have like two and a half oh. days to kill until it's pirate time. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> Beachside downtime, baby. Um... I mean, if you guys end up in Strathmore early, I'll probably think of some cool, like, little side quests and shit for you guys to do while you're there, right? Fuck it. Is it built a sandcastle? Plus, we have to kind of, like, I need to wait for Soko to be there anyway, because starting that yeah. whole journey off without Jax, or Soko there, feels weird, because it's like, mm -hmm. it's like his thing, you know? So, uh, we'll see. Um, It's fine. We got a lot of shit to talk about in character. Also learned a lot about um, this thing, or like uh, about a Lazarin's background in particular, with uh, a family uh, going mad, something called the Override, um, that the Nightwebs believe is the key to control the elements that rule this continent in particular. Uh, learned that the Override is actually a weapon or something created by the dragons in their war with the elementals but the war ended and the dragons got defeated before they had a chance to use it and that, that this override is now under the protection and safekeeping of the earth elemental lord uh, also learned 
uh, that there are more connections to this whole overlying theme than the party may have initially thought with um you know there, there's suspicions that elasrin's family may have some connections to the uh elemental plane of earth due to some things said last session there's some suspicions that this weird place where a bunch of elements meet has something to do with with Digon's, uh premonition of this place that has like snowy mountains but also a desert and basically this like place where a lot of climates and in that i guess you could also say elements meet at the same uh, at the same point uh, or at the same place a lot of shit a lot of suspicions not much is really sure but a lot of a lot of suspicions and well, basically, the party is starting to believe that coincidence does, in fact, not exist. Hence the title of the last episode. That was a recap. That's pretty, I think that's pretty yeah, over-encompassing, right? Great recap. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alrighty. Before we get going with the actual, like, talking about stuff, mm -hmm. let's first do a little gimmick segment that I like to call D&D yeah. &D Tweet of the Week, where... We started doing this last episode. I scour D&D &D Twitter to find a tweet that makes me chuckle, and I share it with you guys, and we can talk about it. Um, the tweet I found, I don't know, it just gave me a fucking, it gave me a good laugh. Uh, basically, it is it is tweeted by uh, the user at Other Happy Place, and uh, they said, "Be a witch in Dungeons and Dragons. Get trapped in stone dungeon. Learn spells stone to flesh. Turn walls into flesh. Cut through walls. Adventure party very upset for some reason." And I don't know why, but it fucking, it gave me a good chuckle. It has a follow-up, by the way, oh, which God. made it even more funny. Uh, they replied to their own tweets saying, Cleric won't stop vomiting? Picky picky. <laughs> like, I, I don't know why, but this, I, this gave me a good chuckle, man. This gave me a good it, fucking chuckle. It's very much like the difference between, like, moral party members and very utilitarian party members. Like, I just have this image of, like, this dungeon that now is flesh and somewhat, for some reason, sentient and just, like, crying out in pain as this person <laughs> is there, like, having through it. Like, it's just more efficient than digging. No, what would be even worse is not crying out in pain, but in pleasure. Oh, God. Oh, no, the dungeon just moans. Yeah. This, this like, tweet, it made me, like, think, you know, as far as, like... You know, you're stuck in some place. How the fuck do you get out? Like that line of thinking. What are what what like creative ways with the with act? You know, with with things that you could potentially have access to as you level up. What kind of like crazy like fucking out of the box thinking thought up getaways would would your character in theory be able to do? I mean, allows him would be able to do like most. What, like fucking create undead it's a level three spell like there's some crazy shit you can do with that you know fucking there's some there's some shenanigans with like a bunch of shit of just auras and all that that you just there like fuck it there you go instead of instead of revivifying the party remember i'm like turn on dead let's fucking do that or whatever it fuck it's called raise dead whatever fuck it's called a fucking undead one and just be like I'm being helpful. <laughs> go on. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, not necessarily like dungeon shit, because realistically for Brooks, Barbarian Monk, all it becomes is, oh, there's a trap in the way? Yeah, I just walk through it. Yeah. But like, there's some real fun shit you can do with Drunken Master. Like... The big fucking bad unleashes their fucking mega hell cannon attack and just misses. And you're like, oh, that missed? Yeah, I'm gonna spend a key point. That now hits, I don't know, your fucking lover Jeff over there. And he's just obliterated by your own attack. Not Jeff. <laughs> what the fuck did Jeff do, bro? It's fucked up. I was thinking, <clears throat> like, as far as, like, some creative getaways go, I would really want to see, you know, your... <sighs> You're a fucking spellcaster, right? You're you're a high level spellcaster, and you just get like swallowed by a big 
animal or monster and you just cast fucking true polymorph on yourself turn into a dragon just tear him apart from the inside you know some shit like that fucking cool fucking funny someone somewhere plane, has this plane shift their stomach or, or plane that. shift their stomach or that would you i mean i no do not upgrade but... is the wording on plane shifts you touch a willing creature or just anything you touch no don't have to be i'm yeah. pretty sure there's a saving throw so because like if, saving throw. okay so like because if you're in its stomach you technically touch it so there's a chance that you just teleport the being with you right no. to this different plane true Funny. It's funnier to I be feel like to, if, you, if, you, teleport on an if you did something like banishment on a creature that you were inside, would you not just be left in the unoccupied space after they're gone? Or would you be banished with the creature because you're technically I like, don't know. part of the creature? Because now. obviously their items go with them, right? So Yeah, you, if the item goes with them, technically are you an item within the creature? To the creature, you could argue that you are, right? Like, because you're like, if well, you it's all, eat it, lunch it all boils and then down teleport. to is the writing in spells like written with the creature you're casting on in mind? Like, because the 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 fucking T Rex that fucking gulped you down in one fucking bite might consider you an item, like a food item, and therefore, you know what I mean? That's an interesting, interesting like way of looking at it. I have, I don't really know what I would do in such a situation, to be honest. But it, I don't know. I don't know. Because yes, you are a, a person, but you're not a you're not you're not a cre you're you're. Do you get what I'm playing at? You know yeah. what I mean? I think I think a lot of that is why it specifies like the target mm. specifically. <laughs> um, I'm picking up what you put down. But like, there's no official ruling on like whether a swallow's creature would be left behind or banished or. You know, shit like That's that. That's why I love D and D, man. There's so much shit that you can just, like. Up to your own I mean, interpretation. It's what five E is about. It, it's like, literally like, like, in what kind of mood am I when that scenario happens, right? Am I, I mean, in like, a if, the party has pissed me off the last couple of sessions? Let's go fucking t teach him a lesson mood, because then you're gonna get transported with them. Am I feeling generous because I don't want you guys to eat shit and die? Yeah, you probably stay behind. You know what I mean? It's one of them ones. <laughs> it fully no, depends on like, my mood. If, hey, wait, <laughs> if you like, if you eat like your lunch, right, and then you do like a teleport or whatever, your lunch doesn't just magically leave your stomach. <laughs> It's no, like but unless you're a lizard them. folk, your lunch probably isn't a living creature. Oh, that's what you got. <laughs> yeah, that's what. I, that's like the only argument you could make is like. And Lazarus swallows you're baby chicks. Yes, hole. you are being eaten, but it's not like you like if you were dead and then eaten, you'd probably go with. A corpse them. is an object. If you were right, yeah. If, but you, if you were if still you were alive, dead, that's when you're like. If, if you were dead, you would go with them. That's guaranteed. Yeah. If you would rule that alive, you stay there. What if you're unconscious? Oh, f dude, I don't fucking know, man. I'll, I'll have to like, figure it out by the time that I think it might actually happen. How about that? Can we make that arrangement? <laughs> characters don't have any swallowed. creatures that swallow us. Well, uh, we've met four of them. They they're in a tavern in Eldalon. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, oh. The creatures that will swallow us. Prostitutes and gigolos, baby. Oh yeah. Nice. World's oldest profession. They pay their tax. Don't you worry. The taxman is the second oldest profession. <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, is, I just, this was this was a tweet that I looked at. And I was like, yeah, this is funny. I want to share this with the world. So here you are. Funny tweets. The reply makes it even funnier. Smile. Um, yeah. Boom, boom. All righty. Uh, we don't really have, really have any viewer questions submitted. So I just want to see... Do you guys have any questions or comments about the last few sessions or things that happened that you want to talk about? First of all, yes. What the fuck, man? Yeah. Yeah. What, what the fuck? Just what? what the fuck, man? What? What the fuck? What? Uh, I do a lot of shit, man. You got to be a little more specific. <laughs> I don't know. Let's start with fucking Brooks's alter identity that he hasn't actually used in campaign. And I was holding on to for like the one time when we were in that sort of area and it would be useful. Or when we needed to infiltrate some sort of like noble shit to like have a fucking party. Yeah. But now that's burned. Even if this like whole murder thing doesn't come to bite him on the ass. It's gonna Dude, make a whole new and fucking the thing false is, persona. The, the, the thing is, right? 
it did. It's gonna be a good one, man. It's gonna be fucking good. <laughs> it's gonna be fucking good, dude. I hate you so much. Because <clears throat> I have genuinely, like... You did this. You're the one that keeps yapping. My backstory never comes up. <laughs> so I made it yeah, fucking Yeah, because cool. I, like I like to be the fucking... We all make the fucking joke of, like... Our character doesn't have trauma in their backstory. Our character doesn't yeah, have anything. Yeah, and now, and you were for the longest time the only character in the party that has not had any sort of like backstory ties into yeah, the game. Yeah, because Brooks specifically avoided it. And now, I made it so, motherfucker. So now, now you have. You know. So Brooks you no longer have to feel was... left out. You're welcome. I was doing you a favor, okay? <laughs> Can't wait to find out who my demon daddy is. I have that shit predetermined, ready to go whenever I need. I feel like it needs to come up. I also like. I love the fact that like I as a character, uh, sorry, I as a player know like Brooks' sub race and and his ultimate descendant. But mm -hmm. bork, there's bork, dogs bork. outside. I can tell. Fucking Onu is back at his shit again. Uh, <laughs> like I know that, but Brooks has no idea. He's just like, yeah, I'm a tiefling, I guess. Yeah, I really enjoyed that little conversation Brooks had with Valor about, like, you know, what's this, like, thing, what's this, like, innate ability to speak Infernal shit? Like, really just, like, d asking these questions that are basically, like, that are so normal to most tieflings. And for Brooks, it's kind of like a, why can I do this? Yeah, because I suppose the thing is that, like, Brooks sort of grew up in some ways knowing that he was a tiefling, mm -hmm. but also in some ways, like, you know, the, the sub-race of tiefling that he is is not super common. And the whole sort of vibe is that, like, that... So it made sense to me that a tiefling of this subclass mm -hmm. that is about deception and disguise and is related to someone that is about deception and disguise would be the tieflings most likely to look human. Yeah, no, yeah, I've, yeah. You Blend know. in and all that absolutely makes sense to me and obviously like there are some elements of the curse that manifest some of them are much more subtle than other tieflings like the whole holy magic makes brooks feel sick mm -hmm. which is just like a really minor thing that goes hang on maybe he's not normal um but obviously he's sort of tieflings like i think the tieflings get a lot of play because they're a fun class but they're not, like, horrifically common. Like, you know, there's normally only, um, like, a couple. If you're in a small town, there's only going to be a couple. Yeah, no, they're they're common enough for people to understand and know what they are in, like, the more civilized parts of the world. But they're also uncommon enough to not fucking run into one every corner you turn. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're, they're common... But definitely less common than you know your dwarves, your elves, your humans, your your gnomes, and all that shit, or your your halflings and all that shit. But they're common enough for for the world, um, for the civilized world to you know understand what they are and not be terrified of them, unless they're some like diehard, hardcore religious, like anything from the hells is bad kind of kind of group. It's a it's a it's a thing that like. I thought about it when I was doing Brooks's backstory, and it's like, there are enough tieflings in the world that he's like, he's aware of what he is, and he's aware of what other tieflings are. Yeah, and especially in, in my world, you know, both last campaign and this campaign, there are plenty of tieflings that that, show, that have shown up throughout the, the course of the, both of the campaigns, I feel like. But they're not super common to the point where you it's very, like... Like, it's not the sort of thing that you would be educated on unless you're educated on it by another tiefling. Like, his adopted yeah. human father is going to know what a tiefling is, but he's not going to know why tieflings can magically speak fucking Infernal and then mm -hmm. teach that to Brooks. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the whole... Like, I can't really go into too much detail about, you know, the, the initial question, which is like... Her or my fucking backstory, my my alter ego was uh, came up, whatever. But it's gonna be, I hope at least it's gonna be like a proper like. It's gonna make you thonk. It's gonna be it's gonna be a mind fuck kind of thing. I you know what I mean? Like I really I really hope my intention with this 
is to be what I want with this thing. Whenever you go to investigate, I want this to be like a proper 10, 15 episode who done it kind of thing of like who the fuck is this guy? You know, like detective figuring this out, searching for clues. That's my intention. That's my goal. That is like my 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 hope that what this story arc will turn into once it gets pursued. It fucks me so bad. While also trying to avoid Brooks to get fucking arrested and go to jail. You know, it at the screws same time. me over so bad because like I have in my head a list of all the people that know both what he looks like and that identity. And none of them on the list strike me as people that would do this. Which makes it even more like, what the fuck? I wait for it just to be like, some guy. <laughs> just, just some, some random No, dude. it's gonna be... I mean, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to it, because I, I, it's gonna be sick. You know what I mean? It's gonna be really like... Yeah. Like, Ethan, if you somehow see it coming, like who it is, I'd be... Impressed, but also very fucking disappointed and surprised because I, f from where I'm sitting right now, I'm like, there's no fucking way he sees this coming. Is you it someone me? directly mentioned in my backstory? I'm not gonna fucking say anything. Oh, nothing. Bitch. You're getting nothing because I want this to be like a. I, what, what I want is I want both the in character and out of character reaction to be the same. Just utter fucking shock. That is my intention with this. So I'm not gonna give you. Anything. Anything. I hate it. It's gonna be worth it. The payoff's gonna be fucking worth it. Trust. Yeah, but until then, I have another, like, 20 sessions of Brooks being like, what the fuck is going on? Let's just ignore it and carry on and hope that we don't <laughs> get arrested. Um, but yeah. That shit's gonna be fun. Anything else you guys want to bring uh, let, let, uh, As as Ethan said, I'm gonna follow up on his question on what the fuck. Uh, that, uh, just in general. No, you're fucking killing it at the moment. I actually have a question for Ethan. <laughs> oh. As well. So, like, how, with the episode we've just had, with all these sort of, these, like, coincidences and ties and, you know, plot points, whatever you want to call them, all come together, and Brooks seemingly, like, having avoided connection like Jax, but we can infer both like in and out of character weird metagame that Jax is a pirate, we're about to go in the ocean, we have just dealt with the water elemental. You know, shit's gonna come up about Jax in water. Like, if it doesn't, fair, but like that's our connection. Jax and water, that's like a big connection we've had for a while. He's blue um, after all. Exactly. True. True, um, he's blue. You know how does know. Brooks like overall like I don't know feel, but more is there almost this sort of hubris understanding that, oh, I don't have a part to play in this, I'm just an observer, and I've happened to be with these people? Or does he think, oh, fuck, when is my connection coming? Like, what is my, like, is he questioning, like, his part to play? Or is he just like, I'm here for the ride, because what's great is I can dip at a moment's notice, because I'm not a part of this. It's not even, like, a hubris. It's very much a, a sensation of whoa, these people are all into some really weird shit. Like, you know, <laughs> that dude's fucking shooting fireballs out his cock yeah. now. She's fucking related to Jin's. She's fucking, you know, like, in with this fucking group that go and collect things, and and he's fucking down with the trade queen, and, you know. Meanwhile, Brooks is just there. You know, like, He's not secretly 300 years old like anyone else. He's not secretly magic like anyone else. He's not the fucking chosen one. He is, like... Like, obviously, to some level of metagame knowledge, he's... You know, he has fighting ability, and he is more than the average person. But yeah, but in any his D &D, mind... Any D&D &D character is, right? Like, that's yeah. the whole point of d d is, like, you are stronger than the average Joe. But in his mind... Adventure. He's just some guy that can throw punches and can con his way out of shit and happens to be along with this group because at first it was good money and now he's not sure if he actually cares about them or not but like yo what the fuck everything's really complicated and magic and that's fucking weird and you guys are all weird and this is some weird culty bullshit 
and I don't want to drink the fucking Kool Aid, my guy. Is you already is have. Brooks is Brooks in at least mentally, obviously not like actually in a position, but is he in the, like this position where he thinks he could just be like, hey, I can cut ties and I'll be fine. Like other than like maybe having to deal with someone who like knows about the night webs, like that night webs will know me sort of maybe. Like if there's someone like high up enough or whatever, he or does he think? Oh fuck! I got to stay here. <laughs> he would definitely like to convince himself that he can dip at any point, and he has that control. Yeah. <laughs> there are a few moments that have made him question that. Mm. For one thing, at the very least, he doesn't think it's sensible to dip away from you guys until he's got his shit in order. Yeah, and he thinks that you guys <clears throat> are a good path to that. But also, like, there's moments every now and again where, like, he realizes he actually gives a shit. Yeah. And he's like, oh, fuck. You know, it's like fucking... That's character three development, we baby. He, he saw three it weeks the into, not like, giving a fuck about anything, some... and now he gives a fuck. <laughs> it, legitimately, it's like three weeks into texting some girl, and, he, and he's like, shit. I'm actually excited to see these people. <laughs> you know, like, <clears throat> there have been moments where Brooks is like actually made an effort to emotionally connect to multiple people in the group and then sort of afterwards been like why the fuck did i do that <laughs> yeah the thing about like this campaign right like last camp like i wanted the storyline and and stuff for this campaign to feel different and when i thought of the concept of this hidden continent and you know i was like oh let's make this like super elementally and and shit and this is really like the foothold the elementals have in the in the prime material plane this is their like breeding ground outside of their respective planes of existence right um and then you know when i was thinking of like world lore and shit i was like well there was this like big ass like b way before this all got conceptualized when i was making just overall world lore i had already written about this like war between dragons and elementals that took place on this plane and yada 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 blah 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 and i was like okay perfect that's gonna be definitely be brought up cool sick we're gonna learn about about that shit and then <clears throat> when koiba hit me with his backstory and this like override thing and then also this like night web stuff i was like dude this is way too grand of of, of, of a tool to give to a storyteller and a story writer to only use for like a one-off story arc i was like this i can make this a part of like the grand scheme you know what i mean sometimes I you just get given this. something and you're like this is way too good to just use once and then fucking yeah. throw away i i i this is bigger than yeah. koiba thought it would be when he gave it to me because I, it's just, it's just have... way too good. It's way too good to fucking yeah. waste. I think that's, like, a lot of where my writing comes from. Is that, like, plot point why, like, you know my back, like, you, both of you know my backstory writing is dog shit. Like, it is. <laughs> it's, I can't be fucked. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, it's just a dude, yeah, yeah, right? Somehow you always give people just but, enough to fucking run with. You know what I mean? I think I'm good at making campaign points. Like, yeah. you know... With like Ethan's one, yeah, that Cyrus. whole fucking yeah. with Cyrus, that whole cult. That's a that was a huge storyline for that like part of campaign was that, mm -hmm. you know, and that was like a huge world lord. Like now with this, like Nicole, not so much. Yeah, you you, you can't hear it all the time. No, but like I would rather create something that can be used, like every like obviously I'll have the touching base on, and like yes, it might be centered around me, but like for the most part it isn't. I'm like a small piece to play. Yeah. And then it's like the entry gate, but then create this thing that then everyone can like kind of go into and get enjoyment out of rather than being like, this is my like jerk off to myself and like my storyline where I get, you know, I get my moment and like, which is fine, which is like everyone should have that because that's what makes D&D &D fucking amazing is you could be like, that's my character and I'm investing in the story. Yeah, yeah, but like that's what, how I've always like that same idea, yeah. same, same last campaign, right? Like every character yeah. in the campaign had their Kid. big like, this is my yeah. moment yeah. thing. We've had Nicole, you know, being yeah. able to yeah. fucking rebuild his childhood home yeah. after it got yeah. destroyed many, many years ago and finally getting like payback for yeah. what had happened. We've had aberan with his entire fucking like the raven queen story and, yeah. and all that shit and like redemption basically 
Exactly. Separating himself from 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 his original god to then follow this different god into a whole different direction. We've had fucking uh, Naronk, Naronk and his fucking like you know, reconnecting with the parents he lost when he was super young and learning about the Feywild and his connection there and, you know, visiting his, his dying mother before she passed away. Um, even fucking, uh, fuck, um, Morwen, right? Yeah, fucking Morwen, yeah. her, she joined the campaign late because Naronk died, but even she had, like, this big-ass moment yeah. with, like, you know, the fucking... Her, Town sinking into the ground and all that shit. Um, fucking uh, Gen had a huge fucking part to play uh, in um, certain story arcs and the whole, uh, you know, the whole, like basically the last act oh. of the campaign was all about his backstory and 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 the people that were involved you know the people that killed the king of that's which like, he served that, and that's the shit i love the most is where you have this backstory point that like everyone can buy into and like yes it's your backstory but like you've you're just like the gatekeeper of it almost like you're just like the doorway being like oh can i take your hat sir or oh, by the way yeah <laughs> the and then you know, no. we had Kassarin, the whole, like, you know, reuniting with Matchstream and then having a kid, uh, all that shit. Yeah, Tannis had her uh, old fucking with with, and... with with the, yeah, f her parents, but also the whole circus thing, which was, like, a big early, uh, probably the, one of the, one of the earliest story arcs we did, but also, in my opinion, one. one of the best ones. The whole circus fucking oh, vampire Lord Iron Deck shit. Yeah. I, when I look back, as to, like, all the fucking storylines or story arcs we've done. That is one of my favorites. Uh, Lord Iron down. Deck came home. Like, it was just one of those stories where it's like, man, it had everything. Like, yeah. it really, like, we had a character death. We had, you know, we had this rise up. We had a struggle of a fight. You know, we went to a fight where the two tanks were half health. And, mm. like, ingenuity from a player, from your know, Laura using the fucking, yeah, the fucking shape water shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Basically, because he was meant to be a much bigger threat throughout the campaign yeah, than he was exactly. because of Kisaren's fucking shape water gimmick. Um, I'm forgetting. Trim, Trim had a huge yeah. fucking storyline yeah. when when you guys went to the Phelan Forest and and all that shit. You know what I mean? I and that's what I always want to happen. So like, same with this campaign. Everybody's character is going to have a a huge part to play in a storyline. And potentially also in uh, multiple or the grand scheme of things. And when I initially, like, you know, I looked at last campaign, and I was like, okay, last campaign was very much a um, group of characters that meets in a, you know, almost not exactly, but almost the classic meet in tavern. You all got summoned to do this one thing, Yayi, Dab, and that's how you become adventurers. This, and, and then, you know, there's like cults trying to take over the world, blah, blah, blah. That grandiose story writing and this campaign has some of that, but also throws some like twists in the mix of like it were 35 sessions deep, and this is the first time really that the like that a threat has revealed itself that is like, oh, this is like this is some potential Armageddon shit. Um and from know, the get-go, I've like, always wanted to, like, this elementals are going to be a big part of it, and you guys got introduced to, like, the struggle between the elemental lords. Oh, yeah, it's Tisha. The other elemental lords aren't too happy with him. Um, you know, and how is that going to, and how is what you're going to do affect that side of things? The, the, the like, behind the scenes that you guys don't really see. But there's definitely, there's definitely things happening, you know, in, like, the, the, the conclave of Elemental Lords because of what happened at Lake Udina. And um, this, this content, I was always like, yeah, the way this content revealed itself was it was previously hidden by some, like, big storm Elemental type shit. And suddenly, gone. And there it is. The content is there, just revealed to the world. And I'm just super excited to now basically have given you your first look of like oh this is what this is this is you f you found the like red line that is going to be sewn throughout your entire campaign because this is the story that is like this is the end all be all this you know and you've got you've gotten your first like taste of it you know what i mean 
Mm -hmm. And the fact that this realization came that, like, wait, out of the six people here, four of them seem to have some kind of connection to it. And now this intrigue is, is there of, like, so what do the other two fuckheads have to do with it? When are they going to get in, come into play? Are we overanalyzing? Maybe Daigon's thing has nothing to do with it. You don't know. You know what I mean? I love that. That, like, that, like both in and out of character, like, mystery of, like, you don't know. You have no idea. You know what I mean? I mean, like, also... <clears throat> Other than Kess and and um, Davian, there's no like official link been made with another elemental. So Correct. even even though Lazarin has like you know these oh we got shit to talk about, oh he could be where it could be like oh yeah Lamau we pissed off some guys real early on, like <laughs> kind of our ancestors kind of made a deal and kind of pissed some people off and it's like oh god. I'm excited <laughs> you know. for that like. Oh, that, God, that, like, for for to be more to, more to be uncovered of of like the origin of what drove both granddad and dad or drove granddad mad and is slowly driving dad mad kind of thing like I'm really excited for for that to get revealed and mad then, dude, dad by the time mad dad bad you know this Brooks thing and you're about to do something re you know related to the fucking Jax's backstory and. Because Jack's got a letter before Soko had to go on break of like something to kind of get his backstory going, and oh, there's so much fucking shit happening. It's, like, and it's all like, I love that I've you know because last campaign was very much here's one thing to do, go do that. Okay, now I give you the next thing to do. This campaign I've given you guys have still have like four or five plot lines that you could choose to pursue at any fucking point in time, whenever you damn well please, and the freedom and of choice of what you're gonna do in what order or what you're not going to do ever is completely up to you guys and i'm just along for the ride and i'll once i get the semblance of like oh they're gonna do this next because of the shit that they discussed last session that's when i'm like okay time to dig deep and start building that shit you know what i mean i'm oh, just as much in, along for the ride as you guys are like how many like i assume it's gonna happen more but how many times have we one session you know been like we're definitely going here next session so I got this grand idea, boys. Uh, it'll happen. That's why, like, yeah. I, I I, assume that happens every time. And that's why I, like, I write little beginnings of every little thing or every story arc. And then by the time that beginning comes up, it's like a, there's no way back kind of thing. And that's when Wait, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm safe to start yeah. building this now because there's no way. You know what I mean? I think that's mostly going to happen. If we have, like, a semi-big break and we kind of half forgot, like, a conversation, we'd be like... I know we're making a choice, and I know we said this one, but now I've thought about it for two weeks. Maybe <laughs> we should this. <laughs> well, that Maybe we should just yourself. accept that Brooks is wanted for murder and go have a C hand him in. Just hand him in and be like, "Here's the fucker who did it." <laughs> Even though Elazar knows he couldn't have done it. Yeah, but here's the fucker. Okay, I mean, dude. Fuck him. Very, very sort of tangential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. If the, the murders what? had happened. In a period of time where a Lazarin or none of the other party members could vouch for Brooks, would a Lazarin be tempted to turn him in? Oh, a Lazarin wouldn't turn you in. He would <laughs> try to interrogate you without you realizing and, like, just ask you very generic questions. I've been like, oh, what have you been up to this week? What have you been up to? What's, what's going on with you? You know what I mean? Like, like checking you in. Kill like, well, you kill anyone? Yeah, so like, I'd kill to have a drink right now. <laughs> and she's a Don't you like a sandwich? <laughs> yeah, it's that. No, it wouldn't be like that. Or it would be, you know, it's the, it's the extreme. Like, Galadriel is of two extremes a lot of the time. Is he's either very passive or he's very much like, I'm gonna cast his own truth in you. Or you're tied to a chair. You go fucking answer these questions. All right, let's go. Like, he's either gonna be very coy and be like, I don't really care, but you kind of want to know. Or it's gonna be like. Right, you son of a bitch. Where are you at 2 a.m. on Friday? Friday <clears throat> Pulls eating. the lamp closer. Yeah, exactly. It's like <gasps> a light cantrip just in your face. Good clarify. I, uh, I have a question yeah. for both of you, right? Both of As, uh, With this, like, elemental theme going on, do you have any theories? Of like, just anything regarding like, oh, you know, 
how was the people that haven't really haven't have shown anything that could be a connection how the fuck are they involved or 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 anything it's any any like wild theories of like can, I'm, I'm just curious i want it's kind of here to pick I'm, your brain a little bit so it's an out there theory right okay. go on but when it comes to brooks and his connection to all this mm -hmm. i feel like he will have a draconic connection rather than elemental one and with blacksmithing and with like this like demon stuff like it can so lead into so much like you know he's like you know, the teethling sort of side of him i feel like i also don't know world of like where fiends and the likes came into this war of dragon versus elemental i know it's also more of a material plane thing rather than like a hells but it wouldn't shock me if like because the, the dragons were the quote unquote like the bad guys right they were like the the we're coming in to take this place over, and they like, weren't the victors, and therefore they were the bad guys. As yeah, exactly, all pretty much, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and they the thing were... is, you you say that, right? I mean, not all dragons. One yeah. of the biggest, baddest dragons out there. Exactly. Is where the does she, where does she live? Exactly. The nine hells. Where do things come from? Exactly. The nine hells. So yeah, exactly. I, I fuck with that. I fuck with that that, that theory. It's a good it's, one. It's, it's not like I'm not, you know tinfoil hat on like he's gonna be but i could easily you know with like blacksmithing it's like weirdly a mix of both it wouldn't shock me if something came up being like oh hey brooks your family actually had something to do with the overriding the creation of it like you were a part like your family was part of this creation and like either materials or like in schematics and like in the engineering <laughs> side of it if that came up, like, I'd be shocked anyways, but that is where my brain goes to being like, that's his role. The reason it hasn't, like, been said more or come up is because it's, he's... Well, and the fact that if that were the case, Brooks has no idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, Brooks why... got take got, Brooks got adopted very young, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah. So, like, Brooks has no idea where the fuck he's from. Yeah, literally no idea no idea what the history of his family is or any exactly. or history of like so like that, that's also could you know say you know i'm yeah, completely like nothing i'm not confirming anything but like say that were the case Write it down. <laughs> say that were the case like yeah i mean brooks doesn't know like brooks is gonna have to be told by someone that doesn't know you know what i mean it's it's that like oh by the way yeah deep down you actually have the in you from either two thing or like hey yeah because you're of this bloodline you're the <clears throat> like rightful pilot to this or whatever you're the you're the one who can actually activate this yeah <laughs> like, it's that like hey you got a choice to make now <laughs> buddy you're a big part of this now i know that's 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 like that's your fa that's your game theory it's, just, it's not even like a theory it's not like something i'm gonna be like hard tin for hatting over and being like it's just something that you wouldn't think is out of the realm of possibility, I guess. When I thought about like, people's connections, I'm like, I could see that being a connection. That's a connection I would make to be like, eh, that's fair. It could happen. It's a, I think it's fair. my suspicions on Brooks's connection, if there is one, is that it will be a bit more separated. I, I Without mean, giving too much away, I have one person in mind, and I'm pretty sure Dutch will know who I mean. There is one person in Brooks's backstory that I think could have really got mixed up into elemental bullshit. Hmm. And I don't know if, like... Th that's the thing. I don't know, in or out of character, whether this NPC is totally fine and just doing what they were doing, or fucking raising fucking <coughs> armies on a different plane of existence. Or, you know, like, fucking tickling the ball sack of the next elemental lord. You, like, I don't fucking know. Um, I definitely, like, within my backstory, there was an idea that I had as I was writing it for stuff to do with this NPC. And I definitely left, like... There's definitely options for Dutch. Like, I, I made a couple of comments that, like, is this just down to that person's situation or is this down to a more arcane interpretation? And I just sort of left it very, very open for Dutch. 
But that means that I have no clue what the fuck he's done with it. Um, <laughs> Daigon. <clears throat> I feel like we really don't know that much about Daigon. No. I feel like my personal sort of like half strong theory for Daigon is that there's a reason why these different peoples of Tabaxi were all intertwined. Mm -hmm. And it's to do with convergence points and the meeting of different elemental powers and whether it was that, like, <laughs> they were summoned there and then settled or they went there because there was great power there or, you know, shit like that. Ever considered or thought about, you know, with that theory in mind, you know, why, why Diagon looks the way she does and she's the only one in that community that looks the way she does, you know? You know she was electrocuted as a baby. Alopecia. <laughs> <laughs> Get your wife. <clears throat> I, I'm... Without... Um... Without the spoilies. Spoiling too much... I can say that you're uh, just to put it into perspective, you're in the right city, just not quite on the right side of the city with that theory. Does that you know you, you get one put it down? You're definitely you're looking at it from the from the right perspective, but that de you're definitely not right in some of the interpretations you made, I guess. There's definitely I'll say that there, of that whole theory you have, definitely some things about that are close to the truth, but there's also a lot that isn't. You know what I mean? The Dagon theory? Yeah. There's some parts of that that are close to the truth, not the entire truth, but close to it. But there's also a lot of stuff that, like, has nothing to do with it. So, like, yeah. I mean, the, like, elemental dragon shit, like, that's a long, long time ago, right? Like... That was, um, you're currently in the fourth era. That dragon elemental war marked the start of the second era. So it was like the end Which of the first like one. Which is... Years. That's thousands, right? Uh, thousands, yeah. So it's entirely plausible that something related to that is the reason why these people look up, Let me quickly look up the timeline. I can give you a... Hold on. And because they congregated in this space, and then it's just been diluted the reason as to why over generations. Let me quickly... Just because Is I it? want to know for my own sake now. Jax! Um, Jax can have water mental ties. It's that, I mean, we can't have this much like water backstory and it'd be like, you dare. Yeah, so Do you know there, what? Is, there is the birth of Kaldar, which is yeah. the first era. Mm -hmm. The second era, there was an event called the Invasion, which basically, to sum it up, um... The birth of Kaldar. I'll give you a brief fucking rundown of the, the like overall history and why ages are the way they are. So you have the birth of Kaldar, which marked the first age because, or first, you know, no duh, world gets born. That's the first thing, right? Uh, got shaped by, uh, by 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 Kaldalar himself, which is basically the father of all gods, and that's why the realm is named after him because he's the one that created it. So he's very full of himself. Um, as a place for his children, so the other gods to live and grow up and become the gods that they currently are. So. That's why he made this world. He basically made this world as a for so that his kids would have a home to grow up and become gods themselves. Um, when most gods reach maturity, they can find in Kaldalar to create more life. Not gods like themselves, but mortal beings to look after the world and, and watch it grow while worshipping them. That's how... That's and, and that is how it is believed that all known creatures currently roam the world. That is their conception. Right? Um... When Kaldalar agreed and uh, helped the, the, his children make these creations, these people, these, these mortals, he tapped into the powers of other planes and with this created gateways scattered around the world. Gateways to the, the elemental planes, gateways to the fucking hells, gateway, anywhere. Um, which also allowed creatures from this realm to travel to other realms and vice versa. And with that came the dragons, winged creatures um, that were already hostile towards the elementals in the planes that they shared, because a lot of the dragons come from the elemental planes themselves. 
Uh, and they basically brought that conflict that they had between them with them to the Prime Material Plane. That war was basically already going on in the Elemental Planes, but because there was now access to this, like, new world, um, the war became bigger and even worse because all the Elemental Planes certainly had a, suddenly had a point where they could intermingle, intertwine. So all the Elementals came, all the fucking Dragons came, fucking full-on carnage, uh, which was known as, an event known as the Invasion in, in the human, or in the, in the common tongue, but it has a different name to them, whatever. Um, but that, so that was when that, uh, um, invasion ended, so the dragons got defeated. Spoiler alert, we figured that out, it's not a spoiler. Um, <clears throat> that was, let me think. Um, this, yeah. Second era began with that war. Second Era lasted 599 years. Third Era is after the the Sundering. Third Era lasted like fucking like over a thousand years. So yeah, it's been over 1500 years since that since that war. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, there you go. Do you know the worst part? A little bit of world history for you. Realized? That mm -hmm. going into all this pirate shit, not only is there all the fucking water elemental shit mm -hmm. and all the Jack's backstory shit, but then we also get object reclamation team shit. Oh, you're thinking artifact and sundering? Yes, but also <laughs> a certain because you're right, <clears throat> chaotic, practical jokester individual who may or may not be from a realm different to our own has interest in our little boating trip. Mm -hmm. And that's fucky in itself. Because we know that that is a much bigger player in this game than than before. She's a lot more powerful and important than she was last campaign, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. And you have nobody to thank but yourselves because if you 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 helped her become this powerful I mean, smile <laughs> brand was cute Alpha. okay no but you as a you as a party in the previous campaign helped her cute, though. like helped her gain some you know the final tools she needed to overthrow heroes a fucking god XL. heroes of exile warped so that ragtag fuckwits could run and specifically <laughs> from the carnage Brooke... that they created <laughs> yeah and Brooke specifically could run into attempting to seduce an, an archfey yeah uh, so yeah, that, was, that was a fun little deep dive in, in the overall like world oh, yeah. war smile um there's another you know another segment that we added to the show since uh, the, the kind of like the the, the revamp uh, i'm going to present you both with some uh you know some some what if scenarios and i'm curious to see what you would do um so we'll start the first one off if you had the opportunity to cast true polymorph on yourself what would you turn yourself into we'll start with ethan true polymorph yes so basically, so there's just... there's no limits. You can turn into anything you want. You can turn into anything yeah. for up to an hour. Yeah. For up to an hour? <sighs> I feel like turning into anything too exciting is going to get you killed. You know, you turn into a dragon for an hour, the fucking... Army rolls up and shoots you. Dude. The actual real life weapons wouldn't stand a chance against a dragon. And you can't convince me otherwise. D D dragon? Eh. Yeah. Normal mythology dragon? Probably no, D &D dragons. dead. D, D dragons. Like a fucking ancient red dragon shows up, you think a fucking the fucking army's gonna be able to kill it? Hell no, nah, motherfucker. I mean definitely. I think no wow. fucking nuked. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but like that is a lot of collateral damage, my guy. <laughs> no, but like gun, like gun powerful. You know, yeah, it scales thick, motherfucker, huh? Yeah, but like, 
gun very powerful. They have scales like... very thick. Okay, we digress. Anyway, Sc scales not as thick as tank armor. Yeah, scales not as thick as tank armor. We have anti-tank missiles for our region. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, it's your opinion. You're wrong, but that's fine. <clears throat> you're dead. I mean, you can turn into an object, right? Can you? Yeah. No, I think it's gonna be. Wait, can you? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, one this. creature. No, no, no. Choose one creature. With yeah, you can turn. Yeah, you can turn into an object too. Yeah, object. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Transform the creature into a different creature. The creature. Or you can turn an object, an object into a creature. That's fucking fun. But yeah, what would you can turn get yourself Koiva's into? Body pillow to be sentient. Okay. <laughs> what would I turn myself into? Mm -hmm. I mean, the meme answer is a toaster. Okay. Genuine answer. Uh huh. I mean, it's a it. It says you just turn into a different creature, right? Like it mm -hmm. doesn't. It doesn't specify that you can. Become. Like I couldn't. I could turn into a, a fucking girl, but I couldn't turn into like fucking. I don't know, fucking Dame Judy Dench, right? Like, yes, that is correct. So, you turn into a creature that looks and sounds a lot like Dame Judy Dench, but you could not turn into the person that is Dame Judy Dench. No, I mean it's very vague in the specifics of how detailed you can be and what you turn into. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna be really boring. I'm going to be a cat. That is boring. And I'm going to be a cat for the exact reason of, I want to know how fucking good cat naps really are. <laughs> okay. No. Fair enough. Koibi? If, do I retain? So, let's say I turn to a creature, right? Mm hmm And, like, this creature has a way to, like, absorb knowledge or, like, identify shit. Mm hmm When I turn back, do I retain that information? Yeah, I mean, you would in True Polymorph. Fucking Mind Flayer, baby. <laughs> and I just fucking mind wipe the shit out of everyone, boy. I'm that's, learning shit. That's I'm fucked just, up, dude. Oh, we're just up. running through fucking Pompey City Center for an hour as a Mind Flayer. I mean, he wouldn't yeah, do well, anything because people are dumb as fuck. No, what's great about that is I just learn where all the fucking smackheads live. Which you'd, is learn, you'd learn whose sister is whose mother and whose True. brother is It's everyone. Dad. You learn who in the town or in the city is somewhat somehow related no. to you and who to avoid. It's less of a of family that. tree and more of a Venn diagram. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Or you like, or I would, I know, I think I'd either be something really grandiose for the lols. Like, mm -hmm. am I just being a kraken and just freaking the fuck out of everyone? Because like, mm -hmm. kraken. For a second, no. I thought you said a cracker. Yeah, yeah, but a cracker. <laughs> Just like a little fucking biscuit on a plate. Um, good, like, good save, good save. Yeah, um, yeah you know, like... Yeah, you because know, what the fuck is someone going to do when they see a kraken? Right? I'm like, that's, oh, that's fucking cool. You know, the meme potential of being a kraken. But also, it's kind of like on either thing. Like, imagine just you have this almighty power. You can true point them off into whatever you want. And you fucking blow it on something shitty. You're like, man, I almost like to fly as a bird. <laughs> like... Parrots must have a cool life. <laughs> Just like, fuck it away. You know, like, you just see something thinking, I wonder what it's like to exist as a worm. Like, what, what do, what, it's like, what do worm think? You know what I mean? Like, how mm -hmm. does that, that's the problem I have. I'm like, yeah, I would want to, like, I'd be too curious to know, like, we all think, how do dog think? You know, how do dogs, they hear commands and they do, do a thing. Do dogs dream in black and white? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, I'd want to know. I <laughs> just like oh, I gotta know. I have this whole like mythology to choose from of like these god-like beings and like solars and all that. And I'm like, I wanna, I, I wanna be, a, I wanna be a dog. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, okay. I wanna bork. <clears throat> all right, fair enough. Um, there's one what if question that I asked uh, last time that I wanted your guys's uh, breakdown of as well. Which is, if you were to one day wake up in a D&D campaign, but you play yourself, what would your stats be using standard array? So, if you had to Eight make on a... Oh, 
If, if you had to make a D&D character that is literally you as you are now, what would their stats be using standard array? So I... you've got to pick your 15, your 14, your 13, your 12, your 10, and your 8. Yeah. I feel like as we are now... Yeah, so literally like Ethan goes to bed tonight, wakes up tomorrow, have... and suddenly is a D&D character. What, is your, what are your stats? That's high enough for 15, 14, and 13 to really do this. But... No, I mean, nobody does because we yeah. become it is, but... Yeah, I get yeah, the like, point. Like, which stats yeah. are you best? Which stats are you worst? I think yeah. I'd probably like constitution would probably be my highest. I've got a pretty iron stomach and like, you know, when it like I don't get ill often. Ill, like ill. Ill. I don't get ill often. Like, yeah, I caught COVID, but like, yeah, I for had two to, years. I had being around. Yeah, I had and like a sneeze. In retail. Yeah, and I like, I had a little bit of a snuffly nose lol for a day. I think common my fifteen. I think my 14 would be charisma. I think I don't know, I work in fucking retail. I have to be at least semi charismatic to be able to talk. Like I can't talk or type for shit, but people still hang around. True. <laughs> Maybe that's the real source True. of his charisma. The fact that he can barely function on English yeah, and yet people like, still listen to him. Guy. Yeah. You know, they feel bad for was him. is it is it 15 like, 14 13 or is it 15 14 12? 13. Uh, yeah. Well, have you ever seen the green text yeah. about Sir Barrington? <laughs> Can't yeah. speak English, but bluffs his way into people think yeah. he is human. That's quite the. Yeah. I think my next one would be like, I think strength and dex. Oh no, because I'm pretty fucking close. Dex would be my worst. De dex clumsy is my as dumb. fuck. Yeah. Dex is my dumb. Like, yeah, I'm clumsy as fuck. Like, dex is my dumb. I think strength is probably my mid. Then like intelligent. Oh, maybe intelligence is my ten. I don't really know anymore. I'm not that strong. I don't either. think your intelligence is your ten. I've got I've got a couple of things I'm averagely human, <laughs> like averagely human. Yeah. Oh, persons. I think I I don't know my intelligence is probably my my twelve, and then wisdom, and then then strength. I'm not I'm not the strongest physically. Mm -hmm. I'm not like you know, I'm pretty I'm pretty okay, but definitely but like the two main ones: con high, dex low. <laughs> huh? Ethaniel. Um. I mean, again, dex dump, baby. <laughs> he says as he knocks something off his desk. Literally, that case in point, right there. <laughs> dex dump, baby. Oh, uh, average, a basic bitch. I'm gonna say basic bitch. I'm gonna say basic bitch wisdom. Yeah. Because I feel like I swing either side of that pendulum very easily because, like, I can be really insightful, but also I can be a fucking moron. Yeah, fair. And I feel like wisdom, like, I know it doesn't directly translate, but I feel like wisdom is definitely related to concentration. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Intelligence 12, because... I was the, I was a gifted student that then yeah. petered out very quickly. I'm the same, dude. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, I'm very smart. The, I just choose... I'm just too lazy to use my brain. We're all gifted literally. kids with burnout, and that's why we use fantasy escapism. If I were to really, really, tr really try, I would have aced any education. I would ace any education if I really wanted to, but I just can't be fucked. None of us can be fucked. Yeah. Um, so then what have I got left? I've got a, a 13, a 14, and a 15. Yeah, and you got... What? You got, got strength? Tom, charisma, strength left. Yeah. You're pretty charismatic. Um, like, you're annoying, but you're pretty charismatic, you know? I feel like... I feel like my charisma is really high, but in, like, a really weird way. I... It's like... Yeah, that sounds dumb, but I feel... I, I feel you. Yeah, no, I, it, like, I definitely... I, I, I feel like you. I have the capacity to be really charismatic. I just choose to do that in such a shitty way of, like, <laughs> fucking bad puns and dad jokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But... I feel like if I try hard, I can be a likable person and I get on well with strangers. I would like to think I'm fairly fucking strong. I do all the heavy lifting at work. That has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I'm surrounded by like fucking 15 to 18 year old women <coughs> who all have some form of like injured knees or backs and therefore I'm the one that does all the carrying. 
Um, it's called being a man. <sighs> yeah, gender roles within a coffee shop, baby. Uh, what do I have left? What does that leave me? Con. Leaves me with fucking fourteen con, I guess. Okay. No, Th thirteen con, fourteen strength, fifteen charisma. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with any of that. Um, last one. Thought of this one right before we started, and I thought it was pretty, pretty, pretty funny. If your D and D character would one day wake up in the real world, what normal, th what what normal thing or a thing that we conceive of or think of as like is normal would be the most obnoxiously inconvenient to them? So it's a Brooks and a Lazarin. Alcoholics Anonymous. All the different coin systems. Oh, a Lazarin wouldn't like different currencies, currencies in the world. God <laughs> fucking damn. But He'd be all like, the I've gone from having gold, one universal currency oh, no, no, that no, no, everyone no. understands no, no, no. and gets, like in general. Like, and the fact that most... exchange rates constantly fucking fluctuate and change as well. Like I know this... I know something that would an annoy La a Lazarin more. Yeah. Because fucking exchange crypto, rates, dude. I can see him being like, yo, fucking bartering. Yeah, I guess. A Lazarin. Dealing with the concept of first of all paper money, which you can't polish. God. Oh my god! Then true. credit cards. Oh, credit, yeah, true. Credit cards. Credit cards then fucking off. Bitcoin. Yeah. Fucking crypto money that he can't like, see. Here's the thing though: cards weirdly are gold because it's universal. You can kind of use a card anywhere if they've got a card true. machine, right? Yeah. Yes, you pay more and like there's charges and that, but universally, you can be like, I've got this. This kind of works everywhere. Like, gold would work everywhere. So that he understands. But yeah. shit, yeah. Shit like different paper money for different places and different, like, crypto, again, it wouldn't surprise you if Elasmus was the type of person who'd be like, what is this? I'll put some in. Like, you know the people who, like, not crypto, bro, but definitely not, like, this is shit. The people go, like, I've dipped my toe in and I don't really know how I feel about it. I have, but it's like, there. Quid of crypto. Yeah, I have 30 yeah, pounds of crypto. Me. It's me. Yeah. It's like, I have this... I could, if it goes cool, if I make money and I withdraw it, win. <laughs> yeah, fair. Okay. Say money. What about Brooks? <sighs> what would Brooks find super inconvenient about the modern day? Yeah. Um. I think technology in general, but specifically like the inability of people to switch off and the fact that there's a lot of constant demand and the idea that if someone has your number they can contact you at any point and be like hey and like you can't really avoid that i mean casting spells like sending and shit is basically like the, the true but nobody's texting fucking, right nobody fucking cast sending on him like yeah, flip know, side on that, Brooks is, seems to me another type of person who would at two AM just randomly text eight people to see he was awake because he was bored. Yeah, yeah. Yo, are you up eyes emoji. No, it, no, it's not even that. It's more like, hey, I'm at this pub. Want to come join me? It's like, dude, it's fucking three in the morning. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Brooks, the would, shit slay Brooks would slay like. Tinder, dude. <laughs> Brooks would speed run Tinder every uh, night. Literally. Do you know what? <laughs> fucking DS like charity special set up a Tinder account for Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> we we're just fucking. I'll spend like a month like swiping on it and resp responding to shit. We'll make it into a charity video. <laughs> I fucking funny, dude. Okay. Uh, I, I definitely I, I fuck with with that though because I feel like Brooks is a very like you know don't really think live in the moment uh, kind of person. So the fact that everybody's kind of like caught up in shit and, and like the daily grind which is like normal to us and the fact that like constantly busy focusing on like the phone and kind of letting or like technology and like letting the world around them just kind of like pass by you know what i mean yeah the biggest uh, thing for him would be like you can have a job and your job can email you at like 12 on your day off and be like hey so we need you to send this file in like to him like absolutely not like that's disgusting like the idea that someone can have that sort of not control but like that that there's that level of you're never free not even on your days that you're supposed you're, to be you never are like truly outside of the bounds of society unless you go and live on like brooks can turn around in the current like D D world he can turn around and be like fuck it i'm gonna disguise myself 
and go somewhere else mm -hmm. and just walk you know i walk around now and turn around whereas like the prevalence of like social media and it's he would hate being famous right like yeah, people constantly know like where for, you are for someone times. that has a massive ego and loves attention he would hate being famous okay all right cool that was our weekly uh you know D, &D what if scenarios um which means we've come to the end of today's episode um we've been we've been we've been fucking waffling dude because this discourse is way longer than it normally is um you put so, koiver and you on the same discourse of yeah, course. We also, true we also spent slightly longer before the start as well yeah that's so. true as well but like yeah and so we'll end off with a little teaser of what's to come um obviously next episodes y'all are gonna travel to um strathmore a city you've never been to any of you uh, both in campaign or like you know like none of your characters have any connections to strathmore um and Strathmore as a city is similar enough to Eldilon for the party to feel, you know, you know, get the way things work there. But they're definitely going to be introduced to some people that would not be able to function the way they do anywhere else but th where they are now we're gonna meet criminals well you met criminals before so yeah see criminals with that thank you all for watching appreciate you uh if you watch us on youtube check us out on twitch we be live streaming this shit every thursday and our campaign every sunday um and we'll be back on sunday for dungeon select session 36 i think yes 36 or 37. I think 36. Pretty sure last time that rings was a bell. 35. Um, thanks for watching. Yeah. Appreciate ya. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bum, bum, bum. 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 Bum, bum, 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 bum. Now slowly, like, fade out. Just like... Bum, bum, bum. Oh. Mm -hmm.